everyone. Uh, you know, technology, uh, it can be a wonderful thing considering last time I checked, it was two below and none of us are having to leave our homes. Uh, so it's great that we can continue to get the business of the city done. So welcome everyone to the Monday, February 8th, 2021 city council meeting. I wanted to start out on this very chilly February evening and open up with some, some great news. Uh, council members and viewers, as you may recall at our last meeting, the city council unanimously voted in favor of an agreement with Ramsey County to provide a social worker to be embedded in our public safety department. Last week, I'm very happy to announce that the Ramsey County Board of Commissioners unanimously approved the agreement as well. Little background here, uh, the uh, new social worker that is going to be joining us is really the next step in our Maplewood Mental Health Outreach uh, team that was led, that is led by Chief Mondor and Sergeant Duga under the direction of Public Safety Director Nadeau. I want to thank each one of them for their vision and their commitment to our community and especially their dedication to finding solutions to mental health crises. Having our own social worker working with our public, uh, with our police and fire staff will help decriminalize mental health and it will connect people to the resources that they need. So two thumbs up for uh, everyone and their effort in this initiative. Now I have asked Chief Mondor if he would share with us what does it look like to have a social worker embedded in our public safety department? And also what will be their new role? What is that going to look like uh, going forward? Uh, Chief Mondor, are you with us? I am Mayor Abrams. Please uh, welcome. Uh, and can you uh, give us a little bit more background information on this new initiative? Yes, thank you, Mayor Abrams and members of the council. Um, as you're aware, the, the Mental Health Outreach or MHOT team is a public safety initiative where we partnered uh, firefighter community paramedics with law enforcement officers to work together to assist those struggling with mental uh, health related illness who may not have support or services needed to effectively manage their illness. Uh, the team was created in 2008 uh, given the prevalence of mental health related calls for service for police, fire and EMS. And while mental health related illness and calls re represent over a thousand emergency responses for our public safety team as a whole, uh, in 2020, we were only able to connect with 26 uh, of these patients. Uh, a challenge with the, the previous model was uh, the requirements to manage emergent, short, medium and long-term needs of community members experiencing mental health related illness, which uh, limited our ability to uh, reach many other members of the community. So the, the, the kind of concrete things that you'll see in relation to this initiative are co-response and, and support follow-up and case management. Uh, those are the kind of two major umbrellas. The embedded social worker will provide face-to-face -face assessments uh, in response and in partnership with our mental health outreach team, uh, responding to calls and reports of uh, suicide in progress, welfare checks, or people in crisis. Uh, on the back end, in the more support, follow-up, and case management uh, piece, they'll respond to crisis phone calls, provide screening, supportive phone counseling, uh, referral to community providers, uh, including other crisis teams, and face-to-face -face assessment and triage. They'll also assist in our outreach and assessment and intervention in the community and will help our team review uh, contact reports, conduct diagnostic assessments, and determine levels of care needed uh, while working with the individual support system and other aspects of the mental health uh, healthcare system. This partnership will allow our team members to focus on initial stabilization and outreach while the embedded social worker can leverage their expertise to assist in managing cases and referring patients to more definitive care. In other words, uh, our public safety staff will be able to focus more on emergent and short-term needs and expand our, our depth and breadth of the, of the program. 
while we coordinate with the embedded social worker and they can help manage the more medium and long-term needs and ultimately connect those enrolled in the program to uh, longer term and definitive services. Thank you, Chief Mondor. Uh, do you have any idea when we can expect that the social worker will begin working? Yes, Mayor Abrams. Um, the job posting is, is just getting sent out. So I anticipate that they will start in mid-March. Uh, there'll be probably three to four weeks of training between uh, the county side and then embedding them within our team. So right now I'm hoping for uh, mid-April that we're gonna see them start uh, working in the community. Well, I am very excited about this initiative and you know, I'm gonna open it up in case my other fellow council members have any questions for you, if that's all right. The order that we're going to use tonight uh, will be council member Villa Vicencio, council member Cave, council member Juniman and council member Knudsen. So, Councilmember Villa Vicencio, do you have any questions for Chief Mondor? <clears throat> um, well, I don't have any uh, prepared questions, but I would just say that I am also looking forward to this program and seeing um, how it operates through our city. And um, I would just, um, you know, like to say that <clears throat> as a new person to the City Council in Maplewood, I would. Um, just would love to um, um, be able to see it firsthand. So if there is any way in the future that I um, come watch, I guess I would um, volunteer myself to um, volunteer for the day or however that works or job shadow or something like that, or do a ride along. I would love to um, just experience that. So I guess that's my comments for tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Council Member Cave. Um, um, you know, I would uh, concur what Nikki said and also that I'm looking forward to seeing the um, the stats afterwards. So after this starts, I think it'll be exciting to see the positive it had in our community. Thank you. Councilmember Juniman, any questions? Uh, no, Mayor, but I, <coughs> excuse me again, I would like to say I'm thrilled that this is coming to be. And I would like to thank a number of people because I know this has been in the works for a long time. And so I think we need to acknowledge um, you, Mayor, and uh, Scott Nadeau, as well as the people in the police and fire that you already mentioned, because this didn't come about just by accident. It took some real initiative and vision, and I think it's fabulous. And I have to give you a little um, kudos that comes from <laughs> outside of here completely. Um, someone from uh, NAMI, National Alliance for the Mentally Ill in Ramsey County contacted me and said they wanted me to know that they were thrilled to hear what we're doing here and that they had had an inquiry from Dakota County as to how it was done. So you see, we lead once again. Thank you. It's a, a, a very good point. And I have to say that I have received communication from other mayors in Ramsey County who also are interested in this kind of initiative. Uh, so it is really pretty exciting. And yes, we are leaders in this regard. Council Member Knudsen. Thank you. Um, this is really a groundbreaking program. Um, when you look at um, community health, and as I said before, I'm working on uh, with a major health plan on uh, social determinants of health. And I think you're going to get right at the core of uh, those social determinants. And mental health, of course, is a big part of uh, total health care costs. So uh, I want to do everything I can to support the project, and I'd certainly like to be as close as possible to it, uh, help mm -hmm. out and learn something. So thank you very much. Thank you, council members. Let's move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America. and to the republic, the republic for which it stands, it stands. One, nation, one nation under God. Under God. Indivisible, Indivisible. With liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. City Clerk Sint, would you please do the roll call for us tonight? Yes. Councilmember Villa Vicencio. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. Councilmember Villa Vicencio, you're on mute. Oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, it's been a We're while. We're doing the roll call? Yes, I am here and present. Councilmember Cave? Here. Councilmember Juniman? Here. Councilmember Knudsen? Here. Mayor Abrams? I'm here as well. Thank you. Moving on to the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? I move approval. Second. Moved by Juniman, seconded by Knudsen. The motion to approve the agenda for tonight. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then let's go to a vote. Council Member Villa Vicencio. Aye. Council Member Cave. Aye. Council Member Juniman. Aye. Council Member Knudsen. Aye. And I vote aye as well. Moving forward to approval of the minutes, we have the January 25th City Council Workshop meeting minutes. Is there a motion? I move approval. There I'll a make second? a second. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Council Member Villasencia, was that a second? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then let's move to a vote uh, on the workshop meeting minutes. Council Member Villa Vicencio. Aye. Council Member Cave. Aye. Council Member Juniman. Aye. Council Member Knudsen. Aye. And I vote aye as well. Moving on to the City Council meeting minutes for January 25th. Is there a motion? I move so approval. Move. <laughs> I'm going to go with. Uh, Councilmember Juniman, I heard her her first. Uh, Councilmember Knudsen, did you want to second that? I do. I second that motion. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then let's go to a vote. Councilmember Villa Vicencio. Aye. Councilmember Cave. Aye. Councilmember Juniman. Aye. And Councilmember Knudsen. Aye. I vote aye as well. The motion passes. Moving on to administrative presentations, our council calendar update. City Manager Coleman, this is yours. Thank you, Mayor Abrams, members of the city council. Uh, the council calendar is just a way to give you a snapshot of what's happening at our future meetings. On February 22nd, we will have um, a workshop with Perkins and Will, the consultants on the Ponds of Battle Creek project. I know that some of you have been listening in on those calls or participating, um, but we will have a chance to kind of work through what's going on with the consultants with just our city council and staff. So looking forward to that. Uh, the council meeting that evening, we will have a North End Fire Station update in terms of where we are in the process and what uh, the construction schedule will look like moving forward this year. Very exciting to be able to start this project. We've been working on this for a number of years. Um, under the council comments, which is where you um, ask staff to do some research or to bring up a new process or policy, um, the two things on the agenda yet are the quarterly financial reporting, which uh, Ms. Paulseth and myself will be able to report to you at the end of March for the first quarterly report. And then also the topic of parking space requirements and uh, the taking a look at do we have a parking lot ordinance or parking space requirements that are maybe um, too generous uh, these days with the way our economy is contracting and people are shopping more online. Uh, this process will start with the planning commission where they will do some research and begin a dialogue on that. Uh, to take a look at how other communities are dealing with this issue. And then eventually it will be a discussion and policy question for the council to consider. And with that, Mayor, that's all I have this evening, uh, unless you have comments or questions. Thank you, City Manager Coleman. Let's see if there are any comments or questions. Councilmember Villa Vicencio. No. Councilmember Cave. No. Councilmember Juniman. Uh, yes, Mayor. I 
I would like staff to just kind of look into or maybe take a temperature from us. Um, again, about Tobacco 21, because some of our neighboring cities, and I've been approached by a couple of, of us constituents, are looking into the whole flavor business, flavored tobaccos and its effect on youth. So I just want to take a temperature and see if there's anything we want to discuss. Okay. Did you want to do that right now? I don't care. It doesn't matter. Okay. Or or, or we'll, staff. Let's we'll go around, Robin, and we'll we'll have council members weigh in on that. Um, thank you, Councilmember Knutson. Do you have any comments yeah. or? Questions? I wanted to um, remind that that quarterly financial report is maybe a one pager. It's a dialogue about you know how we're doing and stuff. I don't need you know pages and pages of stuff. Just kind of a heartfelt look at you know how we're doing, what's coming up, um, what kind of expenditures we can expect to see, uh, that kind of thing. So I don't want to go crazy with it. Um, also, um, in the you know we're talking about that North End Fire Station. We're looking forward to it. There's a number of people that'll be concerned going from three to two. And in the uh, strategic um, report uh, on the strategic plan, there's some uh, data in there about uh, response times and so forth. So I think that's something we should uh, uh, look at closely from time to time. Uh, and it looks good uh, from the strategic report, but it's just uh, something that, you know, people have been concerned about. And I think we need to be very transparent about it. And it, relative to the tobacco piece, um, that came up at that Roseville um, um, 623 meeting I was at. Uh, just as a chat, uh, you know, a discussion item, um, I'm glad I wasn't pressed for an answer. So. Okay, and maybe we don't want to have an answer tonight, uh, but let me do a round robin and see if council members want to weigh in, or we can come back to this and think about it in the interim and discuss it at our next council meeting. So council member Villa Vicencio, did you want to weigh in on the uh, uh, issue brought up by council member Juniman? Uh, in order for something to, to be added to the council calendar update under council comments, which is something that we want staff to work on, uh, we really need to have a majority of the council interested in the initiative. Uh, and if there isn't an, a majority of the council, then, you know, we won't uh, move forward with it at that particular time. So Council Member Juniman has brought up the issue of uh, flavored tobacco under uh, Tobacco 21. Council Member Villavicencio, your thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, although obviously um, the safety of kids and them not smoking cigarettes is an important issue to me. I feel that um, prohibiting the flavors doesn't really uh, make a lot of sense to me, um, just personally, because, you know, we have flavored alcohol that we don't regulate in that way. And so I think that um, if adults want to consume flavored tobacco, that they do that. And if um, we have to make regulations to make sure that it doesn't get in the hands of children, then we need to do that as well. Um, if I'm interested in the issue, I think it's an important issue. Um, and I'm, uh, yeah, I would, I would be interested in um, diving further into it if, if need be to see, you know, what um, I think too. Okay. Uh, just so that we're all clear on this, Tobacco 21 is already state and federal right. law. And so uh, um, the, really, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong or misstating this, Councilmember Juniman, we're talking about uh, adding flavored tobacco as a restriction. Is that correct? Yes. And it, as Bill brought up, it's mainly because it's coming from the school districts as well. Okay. And there are, different, there are different variations on this as far as how you restrict. So this is why I asked if we should look okay. and see what the possible restrictions are and can be and to youth only you. or whatever. Councilmember Cave. Um, thanks, Kathy, for the clarification, because I wanted to know what we were talking about. And I would agree with a lot of what Vicki said. But I also think it's important. Um, there's no reason why we can't look at this. Um, you know, smoking is a is a problem, especially with youth, and that's where I think we're going now. Adults, it's a whole 
You know, I am not into telling adults what they can and can't smoke. Um, But I certainly, it's certainly something that if staff, I don't think it should take that much time to pull something together and just let us look at it. And so we're all on the same page. Okay. Council member Juniman, I think you've weighed in. Is there anything else you want to add to that? No, I just, I wanted you to know if it comes from people with kids in schools and they want to know if we are willing to look at the next step doesn't necessarily mean doing anything for adults, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, Councilmember Knudsen. Yeah, I would agree with, I'd like to hear more about it. Um, Primarily, we, you know, our position in the past was, I think we wanted to be consistent with what else is going on around us and certainly look at state and federal. So yeah, I think we should just have an update. Okay, and from my perspective, I think an update is fine. Uh, I am not interested in restricting flavors for adults. Uh, As I said, Tobacco 21 has already passed. It's already the law of our state, and it's also uh, a federal law as well. And so uh, perhaps maybe just an update on what the status of the current law is, and then we can talk about this at our next council meeting. Is that a reasonable time, City Manager Coleman? Yes, Mayor. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Okay, then uh, moving on, we had no council presentations tonight, and I did not sneak in uh, just a a reminder of the state of the city. Uh, It's going to be a little bit different this year. It is going to be by Zoom, but I'll tell you that I think it's going to be a fun event. Uh, We're certainly not going to have our normal lunch and uh, speaker and then, you know, state of the city address. But we do have, uh, uh, I think, some fun things in store. Our communications department with Mr. Sharon and Mr. Schmidt have been putting together uh, videotape presentations. We're going to have a Q&A session. And I think it's going to be a really nice alternative event, given the fact that, you know, we can't socially gather. So that is going to be on February 18th. At 10 o'clock in the morning, you can go to our city website and you can register. It is free. So there's a little pitch to attend the State of the City. And I think we've also uh, billed it as meet our two new council members. Uh, So please uh, think about joining us for the State of the City. Uh, I think it, uh, it certainly will be worth your time. We'll talk a little bit about where we've been, but really focus in on where we're going as a city. So uh, I invite all of you to register. I think it's going to be a fun event. Uh, Council members, was there anything else, any other presentation that you wanted to add? Council member Villa Vicencio. No, thank you. Council member Cave. No, thank you. Council member Juniman. No, thank you. Council member Knudsen. No, thank you. Okay, then the next thing we have is a resolution of appreciation for Candace Okeson from the Environmental and Natural Resources uh, Commission. Uh, Mr. Thompson, you are the presenter on this. Thank you, Mayor and members of the council. Uh, so Candace Okeson um, has served on the Environmental and Natural Resources Commission for uh, over three years, uh, starting in September of 2017, and has uh, decided to step down from the commission. And so included in your packet tonight is a resolution of appreciation for her service. Um, acknowledging um, that both the Environmental Natural Resources Commission and the City Council uh, appreciate um, her experience and her insight. Um, Also recognize her for giving of her time and for her dedication uh, to the duties and contributing her leadership um, on that commission uh, for the betterment of our environmental and natural resources uh, initiatives. So the resolution um, was adopted as well by the ENR at their last meeting. And we are recommending that the council adopt the resolution of appreciation uh, for Candace Okeson. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Uh, council Member Juniman, would you like to read the resolution? If you'd like Since me you to. are the liaison. If you'd like me to. Yes, would you please? Certainly. Whereas Candace Okeson has been a member of the Maplewood Environmental and Natural Resources Commission for three years and three months, serving from September 11th 2017 to December 11, 2020, 
Ms. Okeson has served faithfully in those capacities. And whereas the Environmental and Natural Resources Commission and City Council have appreciated her experience, insights, and good judgment, and whereas Ms. Okeson has freely given up her time and energy without compensation for the betterment of the city of Maplewood, whereas Ms. Ms. Okeson has shown dedication to her duties and has consistently contributed her leadership and efforts for the benefit of the city, now, therefore, it is hereby resolved for and on behalf of the city of Maplewood, Minnesota, and its citizens, that Candace Okeson is hereby extended our gratitude and appreciation for her dedicated service. I move this resolution of appreciation for Candace Okeson. Second. Sorry, I was on mute. It sounded pretty good though. <laughs> Moved by Juniman, seconded by Cave. The motion to pass the resolution of appreciation for Candace Okeson. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then let's go to a vote. Council Member Villa Vicencio. Aye. Council Member Cave. Aye. Council Member Juniman. Aye. Council Member Knudsen. Aye. And I vote aye as well. Moving on to the resolution of appreciation for Dennis Dupee. Mr. Thompson, this is yours as well. Thank you, Mayor and members of the council. Uh, so Dennis Dupee has served on uh, the Housing and Economic Development Commission for uh, three years, uh, starting in, in November of 2017. Um, and last fall, uh, he did um, also give us notice to he would like to step down. I understand he's um, started a new um, executive MBA program, and, and um, which is taking quite a bit of time. So um, we are recommending the council adopt a resolution of appreciation uh, for his service on HEDSI. I would also note that uh, Mr. P also served on the North End uh, Vision Plan Task Force and was actively involved in that and uh, has told me that uh, he is interested in continuing to stay involved because he uh, is interested in uh, the economic development uh, of Maplewood. So with that, we do recommend adoption of the resolution of appreciation uh, for Mr. Dupee. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Uh, Councilmember Knudsen, would you like to read, please, the resolution of appreciation since you are the liaison for the Housing and Economic Development Commission? Thank you, Ware. I'll be pleased to. Whereas Dennis Dupree has been a member of the Maplewood Housing and Economic Development Commission for three years, serving from November 2017 to September 2020. And whereas the Housing and Economic Development Commission and the City of Council appreciate his experience, insights, and good judgment. And whereas Mr. Dupree was, has freely given of his time and energy without compensation for the betterment of the City of Maplewood. And whereas Mr. Dupree has shown dedication to his duties and has consistently contributed his leadership and efforts for the benefit of the city. Now, therefore, it is hereby resolved for the on behalf of the city of Maplewood, Minnesota, and its citizens that Dennis Dupree, Dupree is hereby extended our gratitude and appreciation for his dedicated service. I move approval of this resolution. Second. Moved by Knudsen, seconded by Juniman. The motion to approve the resolution of appreciation for Dennis Dupee. Is there any other discussion? Then let's vote. Councilmember Villa Vicencio. Aye. Councilmember Cave. Aye. Councilmember Juniman. Aye. Councilmember Knudsen. Aye. And I vote aye as well. Thank you very much. And thank you both. Uh, to our former commissioners, thank you for your service. We really do appreciate uh, your dedication and the time that you gave to the city. Moving on in our agenda, uh, we have a presentation concerning our uh, the report of the 2020 strategic plan. And Ms. Knudsen, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Okay, then I'll turn it over to you. All right, thank you. Good evening, Mayor Abrams and City Council. My name is Lois Knudsen and I am the Administrative Services and Performance Measurement Coordinator for the City of Maplewood. My job includes a wide variety of different tasks and responsibilities, but one major role is my overseeing of the City's strategic plan. Our strategic plan consists of six strategic priorities, which have been adopted by the City Council. 
They are community inclusiveness, financial sustainability, infrastructure and asset management, integrated communications, operational effectiveness, and targeted redevelopment. Uh, for the newer members of council, um, just a brief overview of our plan. There are four levels to our plan. The top level is the strategic priorities. Uh, then we have the key outcomes. And those are areas of focus where we have grouped similar metrics together. Then we have the performance measures, which are the actual metrics and the things we are measuring. And under that, we have the action initiatives, which are the steps we take to make sure that the performance measures are being met. Okay, 2020 was a different year, as we all know, nothing really went as planned. But it was a pretty good year as far as our strategic plan progress. Um, as you can see on the slide here, we are at 77% progress on our plan. Lois, um, I, my apologies. This is Michael. Um, could you share your screen, please? I thought I was. Sorry, we don't see it yet. Now am I? Now there we, we go. It. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so we are at 77%. There are several items that are on track and also many that were completed. And then there were about 18% about of the things in our plan that had disruptions. And those are either major disruptions or some disruption. And all in all, that's pretty good considering that everything we've had to deal with in 2020. As I was preparing this presentation, I reached out to the department heads and asked them to answer two questions. What is something that went well in your department's area of the strategic plan? And what is something that didn't work out or achieve the results you were expecting? Then I took their responses to those questions and helped me. that helped me put my presentation together of what I wanted to share with you. This is by no means our entire plan but these are some of the highlights and some of the disruptions and struggles we faced. And what I will do is go through each of the strategic priorities and then have the highlights and the struggles. Okay, apparently it's not advancing. If you could uh, just use the right and left button on your keyboard and it shouldn't advance it. Okay, there we go. I tried that, but okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, for community inclusiveness, one of our goals was is to have a diverse workforce that reflects the community that we live in. And we did make some progress on that this year. Um, we were at 9.8% in 2016, and in 2020, we are now at 12.2%. Most of the progress in those, in those areas was done in the public safety department. And we would really like to thank the members of that department and their staff for all of the involvement of this effort because they really have worked hard to spread the word about job openings and try to attract a diverse group of applicants so that we can actually have a little more diversity in our workforce. Um, the National Citizen Survey is something we use to measure resident satisfaction within Maplewood. Uh, currently, 64% of residents said that they feel welcomed, and 69% say that they feel respected and valued. A big part of community inclusiveness has been our outreach events in the past, and that's where the major disruptions have occurred due to COVID. Um, with the closing of the Nature Center and our recreational programming being suspended, that's affected a lot of our outreach efforts. Um, also, the large in-person gatherings that we have had in the past had all, were all canceled this year due to COVID. Financial sustainability. Um, it was a pretty strong year for the city in spite of COVID and the different shutdowns that were affecting other areas. Um, we received recognition for financial reporting in several areas. Uh, we have an excellent bond rating of AA plus with S&P. We received a Distinguished Buzz Budget Presentation Award, and we also received the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting Award. The general fund performance exceeded expectations, 
and the city is expecting that they will end 2020 with a surplus. Um, one of the down areas that wasn't quite up to what we expected was the interest revenue trended down in 2020 and is expected to continue that trend into 2021. Infrastructure and asset management. Um, public works infrastructure initiatives were on track this year, and that includes a lot of different things throughout the city. It includes um, inspecting and cleaning of sewer mains, street reconstruction and rehabilitation projects, as well as patching and paving. Um, each year, the city sets a goal of completing three and a half miles of road reconstruction and rehabilitation projects. And in 2020, they completed 5.8 miles. So that was well above the goal that they had set. Um, each year, we also inspect ash trees for signs of emerald ash borer and then mark those trees for removal. And in 2020, there were 125 trees that were removed. Um, again, we used a citizen survey to measure satisfaction with our parks. And the results of last year's survey show that there's an 85% satisfaction rating with city parks and an 82% satisfaction rating with the park and recreation opportunities within Maplewood. And during COVID, I think that's especially important that our residents were able to enjoy and experience the great and wonderful parks that we have throughout Maplewood. Um, the IT department had planned some network upgrades to take place during 2020. And many of those were put on hold because they had to shift their focus and make sure that they were supporting staff as changes were made to the working condition. However, at the end of the year, they began doing some of those progress projects and they were are planning to complete those in the first quarter of 2021. Some of those are they're moving email to the cloud rather than a network based system. And they're also expanding the use of Office 365 throughout our staff. Uh, in the communications department for integrated communications, um, communications moved up its purchase of equipment for remote broadcasting. And this is something that will be very useful in the future. I mean, we're using it now for virtual meetings and things, but also in the future when we have remote events, either at Wakefield or at the community center, the equipment they purchase will make the transmission of those, that was broadcasts easier. Um, there's been a smooth transition to virtual meetings for the most part, very few problems with that. Um, and then we continue to have a very active presence on social media regarding several of our different city departments as well as overall city events. Uh, one thing that did not happen that was expected to was the branding initiative that was postponed because staff had to concentrate on more issues related to COVID. Operational effectiveness. Um, staff in all departments continue to adapt to challenges associated with COVID-19. This involved things such as adjusting work-related protocols, adapting training regimens to secure high value but safe training, and working to ensure that our staff and residents receive the best of care in the challenging pandemic environment. IT worked with staff to ensure that everyone had the needed equipment so that they could work remotely and when an issue arose, they addressed it safely and securely from a distance. Um, our wellness program, again, we're having uh, really good participation. Our goal is to have 80%. Um, we ended the year with 79.3%, so really close, but not quite there. Um, we were up 5% from our 2018 numbers. The city continued to maintain our Green Step City Step 5 status through our environmental initiatives. Um, our fire and EMS department have a goal of responding to emergency incidents in eight minutes or less. For, their goal is 90%, and they only hit 87.6% in 2020. Crimes against persons offenses were down 12% from 2019 to 2020. However, motor vehicle thefts and thefts from vehicles were up. Um, there were disruptions in the implementation of the Acela software for building inspections. Um, this is a software that the community development department uses. However, other areas of community development, such as planning, code enforcement, and rental licensing, have implemented the software and are successfully using it. 
And then lastly, the workers' compensation mod factor continues to be high. Um, that, and that factor is based on the number of workplace accidents. And when the number is high, then our um, workers' compensation insurance rates are also high. Targeted redevelopment. Um, big progress this year in the rental licensing program. The staff were hired and they completed the initial licensing for the multifamily properties in Maplewood, and they are starting the licensing of the single family homes. Uh, the city also partnered with Ramsey County to provide $500,000 in county and city financial assistance to preserve existing affordable housing units. Um, one other concentration of the targeted redevelopment is the North End study. And there have been a few glitches with that. One of them is we're trying to figure out a way to develop a method to count business vacancies. So that's something that the community development department is continuing to work on. Uh, what are our next steps? Uh, as 2020 ended and we move into 2021, we will meeting, be meeting with the individual departments to evaluate what went well in 2020 and to make modifications to the plan for 2021. Um, we hope to meet with council sometime in the future to re-examine the strategic priorities and just dig a little deeper and share a little bit more about our strategic plan. Uh, the public safety strategic plan reporting, we're going to start using Invisio to, to report on that as well. Um, both the police and fire department have their own strategic plans. And then we would like to assist other departments in creating their own department strategic plan. Madam Mayor and Council, thank you for allowing me to share the progress on our plan, and I would ha be happy to address any questions that you might have. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Knudsen, for that excellent report. You know, what amazes me is that despite being in a worldwide pandemic, uh, we still focused very uh, precisely on achieving the goals that have been established uh, for our city by, uh, yes, by a previous city council. Uh, and hopefully uh, sometime in the spring, uh, this city council will be able to get together and then go through and update and review, uh, you know, the strategic plan. Is there anything that we need to change or update? But, you know, this really, I think, is a great report card for our residents to see what it is that, you know, the council set out as goals, and then how is it that the staff is accomplishing those goals? And really considering the pandemic and all of the changes, uh, the, you know, the, the resiliency that we've had to exercise, we really, uh, I was very impressed with the fact that we didn't have more major disruptions. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Council members, do you have any questions or comments for Ms. Knudsen? Uh, Council Member Villa Vicencio. None at this time, thanks. Council Member Cave. Hey. Council Member Cave, you're on mute. There we go. Thank you. Um, Ms. Knudsen, I thought your report was fantastic. Uh, you took a jumble report and highlighted and made it very clear and concise. Um, I truly appreciate that. Everything was understandable. And I think it's great that we have something like this to show the citizens and it's not so jumbled that they have to break through and try to figure things out. So I appreciate all the hard work you put at this on this report. And um, I think it's great. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Councilmember Juniman. Yes, thanks, Lois. Um, in addition to hurting the cats by being the <laughs> assistant for the city council, she has to do jobs like this. Mm. Um, and it was very nicely done. I think there's a couple of areas where I think it's wonderful that people can see that things did move forward and maybe we had to shift how some things were done, but the city was still serving the residents and participating and even doing outreach in their limited ability. For instance, when public safety did the food gift and coat drive, and uh, Santa did his drive-bys in neighborhoods. You know, you don't expect that things are necessarily gonna happen that way, but I, I just think it's good to, for people to be able to see that. And under the Parks and Rec, when you think about the opportunities being basically shut down, 
it gives you a new appreciation for keeping our parks up because people see it as so important. And we're currently doing an upgrade at the nature center on the trails because these are things that people can use no matter what. So it's just a really good way for people to see um, that we move forward. And even when things are a little bit tough, good things happen here. I just appreciate it. And I do think that you're moving forward with other departments, creating your own strategic plans is a wonderful idea because it gives people an idea of where everybody's headed and we're going the same direction. So thanks. Thank you for your kind comments. Council member Knudsen, no relation just, to Lois Knudsen. No, no. She, for those no, listening. I can assure you that she took all the tech stuff. I don't have any tech <laughs> abilities, so good for you. Uh, it's a great report. Um, I, I went through the details the other night and I tabbed the page. Now I can't find it, so I'll email you with that. But I have one comment or question here is when you say you're going to assist other departments in creating their own strategic plans, I would assume that those six pillars uh, that have been established for uh, Maplewood planning are, are what they'll use as their uh, major focus. Am I correct in that? Yes, we would strongly encourage them to fit their own plan under the city's overlying strategic priorities. Well said. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Knudsen, for that report. And really, if any residents have any questions about the roadmap on uh, or the direction that we are headed or how we are measuring our, uh, how we're doing. Uh, this really is the place to go. And the person to talk to about that is Ms. Knudsen. Uh, quite impressive that uh, we were able to accomplish so much in a year that had so, uh, so much turbulence. So thank you very much. Uh, I believe we need to adapt this. Let me go back and look. Mm -hmm. no. uh, yes. Is there a motion to accept the 2020 strategic plan report? I move adoption of the 2020 strategic plan report. Moved by Juniman. Uh, motion to accept the 2020 strategic plan report. Is there a second? Second. Second by Cave. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then let's take a vote. Council Member Villa Vicencio. Aye. Councilmember Cave. Aye. Councilmember Juniman. Aye. Councilmember Knudsen. Aye. And I vote aye as well. Thank you very much. Moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, we only have three items. Uh, is there a motion for the consent agenda? I move approval of consent agenda items G1 through three. Second. Moved by Juniman, seconded by Knudsen, the motion to approve the consent agenda items G1 through 3. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then let's go to a vote. Oh, Council Member Mayor, this, I, Council Member Knudsen? I'd like to um, talk a little bit about number three. I always forget the process. So should I have said that before we agreed on the agenda or should I? Do no, it no, it's perfectly fine. We can talk about it now. This is a discussion. Oh. Uh, let's well, see. Go ahead. Uh, we've already got the motion, and now this is the the opportunity for dis for to ask any questions or raise anything about it. Um, I'm going to go back and look and see who's got G three. Michael. Michael. Mr. Oh. Mr. Folds, uh, would you like to please? Well, Mr. Knudsen or Council Member Knudsen, well, my point is, a question? Is that, my point is, is that um, we had a, a letter from a, a citizen who said he's representing a lot of people, okay. and it was anonymous, but in there it talked about spending. So when I looked at this, I thought, wow, this is an expensive thing. But when I looked at it deeper, um, it really supports, um, you know, our uh, cameras for our for, in our evidence for our police department. Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking, you know, as, as expensive as it looks, how important this is for our public safety and for our transparency. So I just think, you know, if, if I'm not defensive about the letter and all that, but I think it's important if people are asking that we describe, you know, some of the expenditures that look high. Um, and this one, you know, it appears to be a, an, a, an expensive expenditure. When you look at its purpose, it is so vital um, to the city. I just thought it needed to be discussed. 
Certainly. Uh, Mr. Folds, could you please, uh, um, we're, we'll take this as a highlight and tell us a little bit more about the Axon Yearly Maintenance Support and Evidence.com subscription on the consent agenda tonight. Certainly, Mayor and Council, thank you. Uh, I will say that I, while well, I wrote the report and my name is on it, I can speak to the technical aspect of it and the different components of it. Um, for any value that it provides to the police department, I would defer to uh, Chief Nadeau. Um, but correct, so it, this involves our subscription to Axon's Taser, um, which we subscribe to, as the report says, the officer safety plan, which includes uh, many different components. Uh, it includes uh, everything from a maintenance plan for the tasers, the actual tasers that the officers carry, um, to a maintenance plan for the body cameras that every officer wears. It also includes the software to manage all of that evidence and usage logs, um, evidence uploaded from other systems. And so we work with community members quite a bit um, to upload evidence. And so all of that evidence is stored in evidence.com. Um, it also includes tools to help better navigate and process that evidence. And so we have the ability to, through the software, create cases and then share it with partner agencies, one of which happens to be the, the Ramsey County um, Courts or the Ramsey County Prosecutor's Office. And so we have the ability to digitally share evidence um, with the prosecutor's office without ever having anyone you know, need to physically transfer it. Um, it also includes uh, other tools such as um, redaction tools for video. And so as um, depending on the body cam footage, uh, some of it is uh, public, and but yet it needs to be redacted in some cases. And so uh, rather than needing to go out and find another solution, this uh, evidence.com includes that in it. Uh, they've also started to uh, push out additional tools since we've gone live, one of which is uh, the ability to um, redact, I'm sorry, not redact, the ability to uh, transcribe certain items and so you can pay for a subscription uh, transcription service right through evidence.com um, there are some other components of it that we are exploring uh, but from a i guess rather high level that is what this includes i recommend start to you a bad. that was great <laughs> council member knudsen does that satisfy your questions that, absolutely i i Okay, right. thank you. Thank you. Okay, then moving on to the vote, Councilmember Villa Vicencio. Aye. Councilmember Cave. Aye. Councilmember Juniman. Aye. Councilmember Knudsen. Aye. And I vote aye as well. We don't have any public hearings or unfinished business. We're moving on to new business. And the first item. Tonight is the Maplewood Moose Lodge and Family Center. And Mr. Thompson, our Community Development Director, has that. Uh, Mr. Thompson, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mayor. Can you see my uh, presentation on your screen? Yes, we can. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank you, Mayor and members of the Council. Uh, so we have received a, a land use and development application uh, from Moose Lodge uh, to locate a, their new facility um, near the intersection of White Bear and 36 um, off of Jarvis Court. Council uh, may recall that uh, the Moose Lodge was, uh, this is the Maplewood Moose Lodge, was previously located um, in Gladstone. Um, and that facility, the city has actually purchased that property. Um, and actually as part of that um, did a land swap uh, for some land that we owned up at, at High, uh, Hazelwood and in, in, um, County Road D. And back in tw late 2019, the council actually approved the land use approvals uh, for the Moose Lodge to construct that new facility. As they've uh, worked through uh, that project, they're actually now seeking uh, not to open the facility in that location, but instead purchase this existing building um, and convert it uh, into their uh, social club for the Maplewood Moose Lodge. The site as I said, is located off of Jarvis Court. It's actually uh, improved with a single story 
commercial building today. Um, it's been uh, used in the past as a uh, kind of a mix of office and warehouse. And so they're requesting three items, a comprehensive plan amendment, a rezoning and a conditional use permit. You may also recall actually last year, the council approved um, a redevelopment of the Saints North site that also included this property as part of a senior housing project. Um, that project is not moving forward. And at uh, a couple of meetings ago, you approved a, a conditional use permit for a church on the Saints North. And this is now um, a development application for this separate parcel. The comp plan amendment um, really um, reverts the, the comp plan back to what was originally planned in the 2040 comprehensive plan. So it's currently guided in our comp plan for high density residential, and that was associated with the senior housing project. So the proposal would essentially go back uh, to the previous comp plan designation of employment. And then the rezoning uh, action is to an M1 classification, which as you can see on this map, would be consistent with the zoning um, on surrounding properties. And a social club, um, such as the Moose Lodge, is a conditional use uh, within that M1 zoning district. And so they are, um, the third piece is that conditional use permit to allow uh, the operation of the club um, on this site. I would say the Moose Lodge is, is splitting this application into two different phases. Uh, the phase that's before the council tonight, which is for the, the major actions, for, which would allow them to proceed forward with the purchase of the property because it, it gets the use entitlements into place. They're uh, planning on interior changes to the building, but no um, changes to the exterior of the building, except for uh, potentially like wall signage or, or other signage on the site. The, the, free, the future improvement um, that they would do would be uh, doing is a, a parking lot expansion to the south. The, the site has fairly limited parking on it today. There are about seven stalls in the front parking lot. And as a social club, they do have a, a need um, as well as an ordinance uh, requirement to provide uh, more parking than that. So they will come back to the city, um, presuming that the, the council approves this application. Um, they will then make the investments in the engineering plans that are needed to proceed forward with that construction. Um, I did look uh, today, just preliminary, we know that the back of the site is uh, quite wooded, um, but if you can see on the dimensions of this plan, um, the, the, the wooded, this, this proposed parking lot expansion would not go all the way down to the south property line adjacent to 36. And in fact, the, foot, the per, kind of the proposed footprint of it would be located in a fairly open space of the lot and, and wouldn't require um, the removal of all the trees on the south side. But ultimately, once that parking lot is designed, um, we will review that um, to ensure they're providing adequate parking and also bring that through any sort of design review process uh, should it be required by our code. Um, we did... Um, as we do with all applications, send a notice to surrounding property owners, as well as a public hearing was held at the Planning Commission, and we did not receive uh, any public comments um, on the proposal. So with that, the Planning Commission uh, did recommend uh, unanimously approval of the application, and we have included in your packet a resolution which would approve all three actions um, with the conditions that are outlined uh, in the staff report. So with that, Mayor, I'm happy to answer any questions. I also know that Gary Leonard is on the phone tonight as well, if there are, and he's a representative from the Moose Lodge, uh, should there be questions for the applicant. Okay. You know, maybe what I'll do is I'll ask Mr. Leonard if he would like to make any comments before I turn to the council for questions. Uh, Mr. Leonard, would you like to say anything? Uh, Mr. Leonard, if you would like to make a comment, I have allowed you to speak, um, but you need to press star six on your phone to unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Well, well, I'm sorry, Mayor. What was your question? Uh, I just wondered if whether or not you had anything that you wanted to say to the council before we... I open it up to them to ask any questions. Would you like to, to make any comments about the uh, this proposal? Uh, well, I mean, I've been doing it since day one. Uh, I think it would be a nice addition to the neighborhood. 
Uh, we owned that building on Frost and English since 1964. Uh, we had two police calls in all time, and they were both medical emergencies. Uh, you know, we're not really a bar; we're a family center. But we, you know, we serve beer and liquor. But uh, no, I mean, I think it's a great place. Uh, we couldn't really af- af- afford the construction loan for the Hazelwood property; it was uh, astronomical. So we've downsized, and uh, I found this building, and we'd like to move forward with your uh, permission. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. Let me open this up to the council to see if they have any questions. Uh, Council member Villa Vicencio, do you have any questions for either Mr. Thompson or Mr. Leonard? No, none at this time. Council member Cave. Um, Yes, and I don't know which one, so I'll just, I have a few questions. Um, The the social club that it's called, is it going to be a place where wedding receptions or people can rent it out and there's going to be more than just the the Moose Lodge um, people who join go there is my first question. No, it, it's this is a private club, basically. You have to have a membership to get in. Okay. Uh, you need a special card to get in the door. Uh, it's not big as the old Moose Lodge, so we will not be doing weddings at this time. We'd have to come back and do an addition and get a permit. Uh, that's not on our plan right now, though. Okay. So if we're right um, now, right now, no. Okay. Anything Secondly, else? then, yes. And this might be for Mr. Um, is it Thompson? I'm sorry. I didn't see the name. Um, the fact that there is a, the zoning limited business commercial, is this, does that cover the conditional use permit and stuff of someone having um, liquor and uh, wine and liquor on the premise? Uh, so, Mayor and, and Council, um, so the zoning ordinance will would allow, uh, with a conditional use permit, the social club. Uh, it would also allow a, a, a liquor establishment as a use of the property, but they will need to go through separately the city's uh, liquor license requirements for a social club. Um, and that will, if if a license is required, the sim could speak to the specifics, but that would come back to the council. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Councilmember Cave? Not, not at this time. I have some other things, but for different people. Okay, uh, Councilmember Juniman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I guess this is for Mr. Thompson. I think. Uh, how long since this building has been used? Has it been vacant for a while, or what's what's the history? Mr. Thompson. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, no, I, I don't believe it has been, it may be vacant now, but it's not been vacant for long. Um, it was, it was a, a, there was a business located here. Um, they had, um, I don't know the specific history, but when the purchase agreement happened for the previous senior housing project, my understanding mm-hmm. is they then made alternative arrangements, they were planning on selling. Um, and so it made arrangements for, um, moving from the site. And so when that deal fell apart is when they um, actively became interested in finding a, a different buyer. Okay. I, I do know that it was not actively being marketed prior to that senior housing project and it okay. was occupied by that business. Okay, thank you. And then I just wanna make sure that they are um, on board with the engineering plan review that we had in our packet that when whenever they come for a permit for their parking lot, there's a lot of uh, things to be dealt with as far as the appropriate um, stormwater permits and so on. I, they are aware and are on board with this, Mr. Thompson? Mr. Thompson. We are aware. Oh, Mr. Okay. Leonard. Okay. I just want to make sure that they were knew what they were in for with the parking lot. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councilmember Knudsen. You're on mute, Councilmember Knudsen. Apologize for that. Uh, I just have comments. Uh, I've been on the Design Review and Planning Commission for a couple of years. This project first became, you know, on the on the other property they had, and there was some. Um, it's a difficult property to develop, so this option um, is really a good one for them. Mm-hmm. For us, 
um, the, the building I drove by and looked at is very nice building. It seems like it would be very easy to accommodate. Um, throughout the planning commission meeting and so forth, there was a good exchange of information relative to what the future might hold for, um, you know, for development and engineering and parking lot and all that. So this is a very good project and I, I just want to offer my support. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, council members, we have three recommended actions before us. Um, is there a motion? I move to approve a resolution for a comprehensive plan amendment for the property located at 1832 Jarvis Court East regarding the property's future use, land use designation from high density residential to employment. Second. Moved by Juniman, seconded by Knudsen, the motion to approve the resolution for a comp plan amendment for the property located at 1832 Jarvis Court East regarding reguiding the property's future land use designation from high density residential to employment. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then let's go to a vote on this recommended action. Council Member Villavicencio. Aye. Councilmember Cave. Aye. Councilmember Juniman. Aye. Councilmember Knudsen. Aye. And I vote aye as well. The next motion is concerning the zoning map amendment. Is there someone who wants to make that motion? I further move to approve an ordinance for a zoning map amendment for the property located at 1832 Jervis Court East, rezoning it from LBC Limited Business Commercial to M1 Light Manufacturing. Second. Moved by Juniman, seconded by Knudsen, the motion to approve an ordinance for a zoning map amendment for the property located at 1832 Jarvis Court East, rezoning the property from LBC Limited Business Commercial to M1 Light Manufacturing. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, council, let's go to a vote. Council Member Villa Vicencio. Aye. Council Member Cave. Aye. Councilmember Juniman. Aye. And Councilmember Knudsen. Aye. I vote aye as well. The motion passes. And the third recommended action, someone want to make that motion? I further sure, move I to approve a resolution oh. for a conditional use permit for the property located at 1832 Jarvis Court East, allowing the place of amusement, recreation, or assembly to operate on this property and subject to certain conditions of approval. Second. Moved by Juniman, seconded by Villa Vicencio, the motion to approve a resolution for a conditional use permit for the property located at 1832 Jarvis Court East, allowing a place of amusement, recreation, or assembly to operate on the property and subject to certain conditions of approval. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then how do you vote? Councilmember Villa Vicencio. Aye. Councilmember Cave. Aye. Councilmember Juniman. I didn't mean to stomp on your tongue, Nikki. <laughs> Council member Knudsen. Aye. And I vote aye as well. Congratulations, Mr. Leinert and all yeah. of the members of the Moose Club. We look forward to your new location. Uh, do you have any timeline, Mr. Leinert? Uh, in my head, I'm hoping we're open by May 1st. Okay. Uh, Thank you. But that's... Well, Look forward to. And if I if I got people to help, I'd drive it down a little way sooner. But, <laughs> okay. but no, I appreciate uh, what you've done so far, and I'll be seeing you for the permits here soon. So, thank you very much. The park lot permit. Great, what a great redevelopment! Yes, it is. It is. We're excited. Thank you. Okay, moving right by on. the high V. I like that. <laughs> Am I done? Yes, yeah. you're all done. Congratulations. All right. Thank you. Congratulations. Bye. Okay, Thank you. we have a zoning map amendment. Let's see. Thompson. Mr. Thompson. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, so we have received a um, an application from the owner of the property on at uh, 2328 Montana Avenue East. It's actually a um, 
attached single family home. It's a part of a quad home um, just east of McKnight Road on uh, Montana Avenue. So the uh, Renee Ruth um, is uh, resides in that property and she uh, operates a, um, a home fitness studio and is requesting approval from the council for a home occupation license. Um, we allow uh, certain home-based businesses to uh, operate without uh, approval of the council, but certain businesses that have the potential for impacts um, on the neighborhood do require uh, the council's approval of a home occupation license. So uh, Ms. Ruth operates a home uh, Pilates studio uh, in a portion of the residence. Um, she provided a detailed narrative that was included in your packet that talks about um, the operation of the business, but in general, she um, offers just one-on-one -on -one, uh, personal training for Pilates sessions and averages about 15 clients uh, per week. And the, the services would be offered uh, just Monday through Friday during the daytime hours of 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And it would, as I mentioned, be one client at a time uh, that would be parking in the owner's uh, driveway spot uh, in front of their, in front of her uh, garage. As I mentioned, it would be located in a part of the, the unit and actually in one of the bedrooms. Um, and other, there would be uh, no outside employees. So the owner of the property would be uh, the only employee of the business. And it's a, as I did mention, it's a small part um, of the of the business. We did send a uh, notification to properties within 500 feet. We did four, receive four responses. They were included in your packet um, from neighbors, as well as a letter from the homeowners association, uh, but just uh, indicating support um, with and not, not providing any concerns about um, the operation of the business. So with that, uh, the planning commission did hold a public hearing as well and recommend approval. And we are recommending the council approve uh, the license for home occupation uh, in this location. And I would note that the conditions of the license uh, include kind of the operational, the proposed operations as, as proposed by uh, the resident. So should there be any changes in the future to say hours or number of clients um, or an outside employee, anything such as that, it would require to come back to the council for an amendment to the license. But with that, uh, we are recommending approval of the resolution uh, with those conditions that are outlined in the staff report. So I know uh, Ms. Ruth is on the call as well this evening if you have questions for her. Otherwise, I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, okay. thank you, Mr. Thompson. Uh, it, it indicates that uh, it's Renee McCoy. Is that the name? It sounded like you said a different name. I had Renee Ruth in my notes. In the staff report, it says Renee McCoy. Ah, so yeah. let's get her on and then we can get her name straight too. Oh, you're Go middle ahead. name. I'm is, on. Uh, is your last name McCoy? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Ms. McCoy, uh, welcome to the city council meeting. Uh, is there anything that you would like the council to know? Uh, uh, any comments that you would like to make uh, before we open up for questions? Sure. It, it, I have not um, done any training here yet. It, it, it did kind of sound with the narrative that I'm already doing it and I have waited to get a license. I still don't have even prices or, you know, it's still a while out, but I, it, it's, so it's basically, I have it set up, but it's an idea right now. Not, not something I'm actually doing yet. Okay. Anything else you'd like us to know? Um, you know, and, and that's, I mean, that's an estimate of, it was a, the best of my ability, what I think it will look like. So, um, We appreciate yeah. McCoy. Yeah. Council members, <laughs> let's uh, see if you have questions for Mr. Thompson or Ms. McCoy concerning this home occupation license. Council member Villavicencio. Um, no, not at this time, thank you. Council member Cave. No, I just have a comment. Um, I just think it's really great, Renee, that you, during these challenging times, have decided to go for a business and being a small business owner. I think uh, hats off to you for going for it. Thank you. And I hope it's successful for you. You're welcome. Councilmember Juniman. Uh, yes, I have a question for 
Jeff, and this is mainly for information, not that it doesn't, I don't think, affect my ability to want to do this, but this kind of uh, occupation license, just for the people who are listening, this goes with the person, correct? So if she moves, whoever would buy this unit cannot do anything on that property without going for a license of their own. Is that correct? Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, Council Member Juniman, that is correct. This is a, a license that is actually reviewed annually as well um, right. by the city. So yeah, if, if there's a change in of ownership, they would need to apply for a new license. Thank you. I just want to make that clear to the public that this is for Ms. McCoy only. And even if she would change her business, she would have to come back for changes so that people know. And I have to say, um, this is only the second time since I've been sitting here, which is quite some time as we know, that we've had this many people, the neighbors think, say, you go for it. She's good. We're, we're glad for her. <laughs> Sometimes you have neighbors screaming and yelling and jumping up and down. So I think, <laughs> you have the, I think you have the vote of your neighbors, which is a good thing. Thank you, Council Member mm -hmm. Council Member Knudsen. Can I, I have no questions, but again, as I'm a member of the, or the liaison to the Planning Commission, um, Ms. McCoy has just done an incredible job answering every imaginable question. Mm -hmm. uh, all the I's crossing the T's. If you read everything she's done, um, you know, this is uh, well beyond our expectations, and I just want to lend my support. Thank you very much for that. Uh, council members, we have a motion before us. Would someone I move like the home occupation license resolution for 2328 Montana Avenue East? Second. Second. Moved Third. by Juniman, seconded by Knudsen. The motion to approve a resolution for a home occupation license for a home based business offering private fitness classes at the residential property located at 2328 Montana Avenue East. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then let's move to a vote. Council Member Villa Vicencio. Yay. Council Member Cave. Aye. Council Member Juniman. Aye. Council Member Knudsen. Aye. And I vote aye as well. Congratulations, Ms. McCoy. Good luck. We hope that you have huge success. Uh, thank you for coming before us tonight. And thank you. It's been a great process to go through. I appreciate all, all the support from the city. Thank great. You. Good luck. Thank well, you. council members, we have no awards of bids tonight. And so we are coming to a close tonight. And as I've done in the past, uh, we'll do our one final round robin. Any final comments uh, that any of you would like to make? And we'll start with you, Council Member Villa Vicencio. Um, yes, I just want to say I hope everybody is able to stay uh, warm. These few days has been really cold. Our pipes froze here in, um, at my house, so it's been a wild day. But um, anyhow, um, yeah. So if I sound a little weird today, that's why. But <laughs> good to hear from everybody here. Thank you very much. Council Member Cave. Um, no comments. Just good meeting, guys. Council Virginiman. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, it was a good meeting. And I, I, it always feels good, I think, to give a home occupation license to someone who has done such a good job and has the support of her neighbors. That makes you feel like people can do things right and don't mind doing things right. It's a, it's a really good thing. And I hope everybody continues to stay well. Um, the news is not very happy about the variants, particularly the one from South Africa and the one from England. So we still have a lot, I guess, to be careful about. But as the oldster on this group, I would like to announce that my husband and I have been vaccinated now. So Yay. we should Congratulations. Be, thank you. We should be a little better off than we might have been before. And I hope all everyone stays well and everyone in the public remembers to observe the uh, cautions so we all stay well. And happy Thank Valentine's Day. Thanks. Yeah. Council Member Knudsen. Well, thanks to um, Council Member Juniman. I get to write in a, in a real hurry uh, the article <laughs> for the review. Uh, but lucky for me, um, I, I was suggested that I write a little bit about St. John's and their expansion in cardiology. I'll be, I'll be in Enjoying that opportunity. So thank you, Councilman Gentleman. 
That's all. Okay. Thank you very much. I want to thank Mr. Folds and staff for uh, continuing to see us through on these Zoom meetings. Thank you all for your attendance. I am very glad that you are all at your homes on this very cold night. Stay warm. Uh, my uh, phone says that it is minus six out there. Uh, and so let's uh, all stay warm. And um, thank you for a good meeting, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night, colleagues. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night.